Flag, a research scientist at the Allen Institute for AI. And I'll be telling you about our project Flex, unifying evaluation for FuShot NLP. This is joint work with other researchers at AI2, Armand Cohen, Kyle Lowe, and Iz Beltegui. Armand will be presenting later in the video. So first, some background on FuShot learning. Modern approaches to FuShot learning are evaluated in three primary phases. Pre-training typically involves using unsupervised learning to train a model, for example, a language model like BERT. Meta-training involves optimizing a learning technique to be good at FuShot learning in general, typically using supervised learning. And meta-testing involves evaluating that learning technique on unseen tasks. There's a few types of transfer one might be interested in evaluating during meta-testing. The first type is class transfer. Can you generalize to a new set of classes not seen at meta-training time? There's also domain transfer. Can we generalize to the same classes, but from new domains? There's task transfer. Can we generalize to a new set of tasks during meta-testing? And pre-training transfer. Can we not perform meta-training, but still do well at meta-testing time? An episode is the training and testing split that consists of a few shot problem. These are typically sampled from larger data sets. And the shot is the number of training examples per class in an episode. So here's some representative work on FuShot NLP evaluation before Flex. The first problem that we identify is a lack of diversity of transfer types. So most prior work evaluates one or at most two types, and this makes it difficult to answer the question of which techniques perform best in general. Second, these evaluations lack real-world data set challenges, like unbalanced variable training sets, where the number of examples per, in, the, in the training set is unknown at meta-training time. And this results in inflated performance compared to what one might expect if one deployed in the real world. The third issue is a lack of rigorous experimental design and reporting, which results in noisy metrics that lack desirable statistical properties. So Flex aims to improve NLP evaluation by first defining a set of principles for well-designed few shot NLP evaluation. Second, building evaluation suites and benchmarks that adhere to these principles. Third, introducing and evaluating a strong, simple baseline model, and also building tools to help both benchmark creators create similar types of evaluation suites, and also model developers to easily train and evaluate on those benchmarks. So I'll now describe the flex principles in more detail. We believe that a well-designed few shot evaluation suite should first represent a diversity of transfer types, including, as I described earlier, class, domain, task, and pre-training transfer types, and also for, for NLP, transfer to new types of languages, et cetera. Towards this end, it should also provide textual class labels to test generalizing based on concepts. And this is crucial for recent prompt-based NLP methods, which are text-based. Second, the suite should contain real-world dataset challenges when meta-testing. And this includes having a variable number of classes and examples per class, having unbalanced training sets, zero-shot episodes, and also not allowing extra validation data for hyperparameter tuning, uh, which sort of negates the few-shotness of the episode. Third, the suite should also support statistical analysis and reproducibility including principled sample size design, which I'll talk about more in a moment, and proper re reporting of confidence intervals, et cetera. Finally, it should be accessible to many researchers, for example, by using our sample size design strategy to improve statistical accuracy for a low budget. The importance of several of these criteria have been noted individually in prior or, con or concurrent work, 
And Flex also introduces new, new criteria. In particular, I'm going to focus on this sample size design methodology that we've introduced. So the sample size design problem centers on the question of how many episodes do I need as a benchmark creator? Some considerations are that more episodes means that you can compute the mean and standard deviation on a larger set of model accuracies, for example, which is good. But more episodes is also more costly, and this is especially true for fine-tuning methods that incur high per episode costs associated with uh, optimizing the model on the training set. So prior literature lack, lacks consensus on how many episodes to use, anywhere from one to a thousand episodes. To answer this question of how many episodes, we conducted simulation experiments. Our first finding is that many prior works use too few episodes. So we found that at least 60 episodes were needed for estimating confidence intervals for the estimated confidence intervals to cover the ground truth accuracy at least 95% of the time, which is a common target. And this held true regardless of budget. This next plot shows the trade-off for a fixed budget between getting more episodes or using a smaller number of episodes, but a larger test set per episode. So here for each fixed budget curve, you can see an optimal point that minimizes the estimated confidence interval width which would allow for finer grain comparisons between different model results. And our methodology involves minimizing one of these curves subject to constraints shown on the previous slide. So our benchmark in particular minimizes this uh, 48 GPU hour curve. I'll refer you to our paper for more details on our benchmark. But as shown in the last column, our benchmark is the first to follow these flex principles. And please do submit to our public leaderboard um, and accept our, our new benchmark as a, as a challenge. So finally, we also additionally release open source tools that we use to create our benchmark to help future benchmark creators. These, uh, these tools enable are extensible. So you can plug in any Hugging Face NLP data set they allow for declarative specification of data set splits, episode characteristics, and the sampler options, and also reproducibility. For model developers, they provide a simple evaluation interface and also utilities for the sampler. And now I'll hand over the talk to Arman. I will now present Unifu, our simple yet a strong baseline for few shot NLP that can perform well on all transverse settings. Before that, let me give you a quick background on recent few shot learning methods in NLP. These can fall into the following categories. First, our meta learning approaches for task and domain transfer. And second, our prompt based methods. Prompt based methods basically format downstream tasks as a mask language modeling problem. And therefore, they eliminate the need for fine tuning additional classification parameters and therefore result in fast convergence in few shot setting. However, finding the right prompt is tricky. And previous work has also shown that despite their uh, promising results, these models are very sensitive to the choice of prompt. Uh, and they're often using additional validation sets for model and prompt selection. Previous work also shows that these models are sensitive to order of training examples, decoding the strategies, hyperparameters, and learning algorithms. Uh, I'll draw your attention to this statement from a recent paper by Perez et al, saying that prior work may have overestimated the few shot ability of language models because they're often tuned using many examples. We call that flex principles prevent, prevent this and say that we shouldn't use additional validation sets other than the few shot examples that are provided um, in the evaluation setting. So is there a better solution? The problem is that uh, mass language modeling is not a natural task formulation. Therefore, um, adapting a downstream task to language modeling format always is tricky. We propose using another approach. And uh, we simply change the pre-trained model. 
that is better suited for the task. We argue that using a question and answering format, we can eliminate many of these problems because we can naturally represent many NLP tasks as question answering. We call our model UniFew, which converts all classification tasks to multiple choice questions and then uses a pre-trained model that is uh, designed for question answering. This is, this is um, a unified QA model uh, and our task format perfectly matches the pre-trained format of unified QA. Then we run unified QA to get an answer and therefore we don't need any complexities of prior work on finding the right prompt. For example, here, um, the prompt that we use is just the topic and then the labels of the class followed by the actual example and the model predicts the output. Uh, for UniView, instead of designing a prompt for each task, we design a prompt for each input type. And we have only four input types that cover the 20 data sets of Flex. Uh, whereas most prior work engineer one unique and specific prompt for each data set. We have one prompt for single text classification, another one for sentence pair, relation classification, and NAD recognition. We evaluate UniView in two settings. First one is pre-training only setting, where we take the unified QA checkpoint. And the second one is applying meta-training on top of the unified QA checkpoint. And for this, we train using the meta-train set of Flex using episodic training for 30,000 steps. So here are the results comparing UniView with prior work. For each of the prior work, we either use the UniView or UniView meta-trained version, depending on the prior work. For example, for the LMBFF model, we don't use the meta-trained model because they didn't use meta-training. Uh, and for the other two models, which are meta-trained based, we use meta-trained version. Uh, each of these works is evaluated on different number of shots and on different data sets. Therefore, we use their exact data when available and exact number of shots. The orange line shows the performance of UniView compared with purple line, which is uh, from prior work. We can see that UniView uh, performs or performs competitively compared with all of these works across all of the settings. Uh, and yet, it is a much simpler model and doesn't use any extensive hyperparameter tuning as done in prior work. And now that we established UniView as a competitive model compared to recent state of the art, we present baseline results on Flex. We can observe three findings. Pre-training is an effective technique for few shot generalization. We can also see that meta-training meta has substantial impact on zero shot performance but its benefit is less so for few shot setting. Yet the gains are still substantial. And finally, we can compare, um, compare the gains uh, based on different transfers. And we can see that class transfer is one of the transfer types that gets the least benefit from meta training in few shot setting. Such breakdowns are only possible through our unified evaluation and comparison across different transfer types. So to wrap up, uh, Flex defines a set of principles for well-designed few shot NLP evaluation. Based on these principles, uh, we provide a carefully designed benchmark that allows uh, us to carefully compare and contrast different few shot learning models. And we also propose and evaluate a strong but simple baseline model that performs well across all transfer settings. And finally, Flex provides tooling to help benchmark creators to specify new evaluation suits or add additional data sets. And at the same time, it allows model developers to train and evaluate these benchmarks and uh, facilitate comparisons with prior work. Uh, Flex is available on GitHub. Uh, please uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.